Hello, Auggies Worldwide. I'm Dave Kassler, amateur radio call sign KE0OG, here with another episode of Ask Dave. Today's question comes from Jim Adams, N3ROC. He lives near Philadelphia, and he has a 40-foot tower, and he's going to put a hex beam on top of it pretty soon. The hex has been much more of a challenge installing than expected. Yes, they're really big. They don't look at it when they're up in the tower, but they're really big. We've had all sorts of fun repairing the hex beam that we have here. It was a challenge. It was a challenge. Anyway, my neighbor thinks this tower is interesting and suggested I install some sort of illuminated decorative thing on top of the tower. I like it. However, won't a long wire, even though very thin, running through the center of the hex beam, detune it? Are there any other options? The answer is yes, if you run a wire through there, it will. You can put a ferrite beads, you know, like you run the wire up to the top, put ferrite beads like every foot to kind of decouple it from the RF, and then you can get it to the top. Now, I want to warn you about something as far as decorative lights on top of towers. You say it's a 40-foot tower. Now, I don't know the geography where you are, but one of the great problems with towers is with aircraft. Now, it turns out that we're allowed to put up to a 200-foot tower without contacting the FAA, but if we go over 200 feet, the FAA is going to want lights on it. They don't want these to become hazards to navigation. Now, whatever decorative thing you put at the top, you've got to understand that it will be very visible to aircraft. So it can cause a problem if they think there's a tower there that's not on their map. Let me show you what the map looks like. This right here is our own Montrose area. Now you see this funny little symbol right here. It's an M. What that means is that there are two towers right there and those towers need to be avoided. Now, as it turns out, there are actually three towers. This is a symbol for multiple towers. And each one of them has red lights partway up and at the top, because look at this, it's right on the path into this runway right here. So you wanna be well above it. Now, this right here tells you the height of the tower, 310 feet height total. So you want to be above 6,264 feet to just graze the top of them into this runway right here, which is the, about 10,000 feet long. So you've got to come in in such a way that you're over the towers, but you come in here. Now, if I were flying in here as a private pilot, I would come in here come in on base well over here and into this, but the commercial jets come straight in, okay? And I see them from time to time coming over our house. A lot of times the jets will land this way and take off this way, but if the wind is too high, they'll do it so that they're landing or taking off into the wind. Now, these use red lights. They also sometimes use white strobe lights. I prefer the red lights, they're easier to see. The white strobe lights, you have to stare at it so that you know where it is because if you're sweeping your eyes across here looking for impediments to your progress, the white lights are a little hard to pick out. When you put your tower up, you've got a 35 foot tower. Okay, we'll just draw it this way. And then you've got a mast and a rotor, of course. And then the hex beam goes up from there in the top, it's right there. So if this is 35 feet, this is probably closer to 45 or 50 feet. So if you put something on there that flashes, or is any color that's even close to red, you will cause confusion to pilots because since it's only 50 feet tall, it doesn't need to be lit. It's possible that you could put, if you've got some lights here, you could put a cover over them so that the light only goes like this for the neighbors to see and can't be seen from above. As a pilot myself, I'm concerned about the safety of things like this. If it flashes at all, it will be seen by a pilot who's quite a ways away as a flashing light on a tower. So they may think they're 200 feet in the air when in fact they're not. So it can be misleading to a pilot. So I suggest the dome over the top of the lights. Also, I would point out that while some neighbors will think that's really cool, other neighbors will think it's a nuisance. 
There are certain frequencies at which you can flash a light that will induce seizures in someone who has epilepsy. You've got to be very careful to avoid those frequencies. And they vary a little bit. You can look up all that information on Wikipedia. If you want a light feature, have it evolve slowly, you know, from red to green. Eliminate all the reds or anything that looks like red, like orange, okay, so that you keep it blue, green, something like that while it's up there. My feeling on this, since this is a tower that with the antenna will be less than 50 feet, is to leave it be. Unless you can keep the light from going out parallel like this, but rather down over where the neighbors are, okay? And have a way to turn it off if the FAA contacts you and wants to know what's going on. So there you have it. Until we next meet, 73.